Good morning everybody and welcome to Wednesday's Assembly. Oh my goodness, I'm recording this on Tuesday afternoon and it is so hot in school. I'm so lucky I've got a fan in my office, um, but some of you in your classrooms, it's been so hot today. You've done a really good job making sure that you continue to drink and just be really gentle and not move too much and conserve your energy but it's been really hard work um, so I'm proud of you proud of how people have managed in their classrooms um, I hope you've been okay at home as well um, maybe a little bit easier to keep cool have some nice cool drinks and um, some of you might even have your paddling pool out possibly to put your feet into that's what I'd like to do and um, the other thing I'd really like to do right now if I could wave a magic wand and think, where would I like to be, to be really nice and cool? I would like to be by the seaside, with my feet in the sea. Because it's always a little bit cooler on the coast, isn't it? And when we had our light housekeepers stories on Monday and Tuesday, the second one was all about Mr Grinling learning to surf. And you were talking about in class the different things that you like to do when you're on the beach. Uh, what different things did you come up with? Uh, somebody said to me they liked going snorkeling so maybe you go somewhere really special and warm where there's all sorts of different fish in the sea uh, somebody else said that they loved making sand castles and the very best days were the days when their um, their dad made um, like a speedboat in the sand and they took photographs of that lots of you mentioned ice cream and then quite a few of you mentioned something that you might use one of these for when you're on the beach or maybe one with a larger and a longer stick have you ever been rock pooling so rock pooling um, some beaches are really good for rock pooling others are not and um, the best beaches for rock pooling are the ones where when the sea goes out it might go quite far out to sea and then it comes all the way back in uh, and it leaves in and amongst the rocks some beautiful little pools and of course within those pools some creatures so one of the most joyous things that we do every single holiday is that we go rock pooling on one of our favorite uh, beaches in cornwall and we find all sorts of different things crabs little fish starfish if we're really lucky and we take them out we have a look at them occasionally if we're feeling brave we might try and pick the crab up if it's not a particularly nippy one but then we always do something really important we always put them back under the water where they came from because that's very important that we keep the creatures in their natural habitats but it's a lovely thing to do and today's story is called one world and as you can see by the cover it's all about some children who go rock pooling and have a really close look at the things that they find in their bucket and it helps them to think about how in a way one little rock pool is like a world in itself so let's read our story one world, one sky, one sun, one moon, one world. It's true, we only have one world. A little girl stood at the edge of the world and looked up at the sun. She watched it go down at the end of the day. That night she watched the moon rise and the stars come out. And as she watched, she thought of all of the creatures who lived under the sky, the animals who shared the warmth of the sun and bathed in the soft silver light of the moon. Oh, lots of different animals there under a bright moon. The next day, the little girl and her brother stood at the edge of a pool by the sea. They looked into the clear water. The rocks in the pool stood like mountains, their peaks white with old barnacles. This is exactly what my beach looks like, where I'll be visiting and going rock pooling, exactly like it. Oh, I can't wait. It's making me feel cooler just imagining it now. Each time a wave washed through a gap in the rocks, dark forests of weeds waved as though they were trees in the wind. Tiny fish darted into the shadows past sea anemones like flowers in a secret garden. Oh, look at that tin can, cried the boy. It's a sunken ship full of buried treasure. And as they watched, 
they saw starfish move slowly amongst a galaxy of shells and pebbles round as moons. On the surface of the pool, two feathers blobbed, no, two feathers bobbed in a blob of oil. There they are gazing into a beautiful rock pool. There's the children's faces at the top as they're looking into this magical world that's just like a world in itself. The girl dipped her bucket into the pool and half filled it with water. She dropped a little sand into the bucket and watched it drift down to the bottom. Her brother found some stones covered in seaweed and put them in the bucket. Together the children watched the leaves swaying in the water. Then they added other kinds of seaweed and coloured stones and shells. They admired their tiny new world, but it still needed something. It needed more life. I really like this boy's t-shirt. Look, it's got a rainbow on the back. Oh, I love one that had a rainbow on the back. So the boy chased a shrimp with his net. And he imagined that the tiny shrimp inside the bucket, there's the actual size of a shrimp, look down there, was like a whale in this small new world that they'd built in the bucket. <laughs> so he's going to put a shrimp into the bucket too. And in a short time, he caught two shrimps and three small fishes. He dropped them carefully into the bucket and watched them swim around. The children had made their own world. It was a new world with its own forests and its own life. There, can you see the fish and the shrimp? Like a whole new world in a little bucket. That's what I'm going to think when I go rock pooling this summer. See if I can make a world in a bucket. Together they held the world in their hands. All the long afternoon they tended their tiny world. They added more seaweed, shells and three more fish. But the more they added to their world, the more they took from the real world. The only things now floating in the pool were the feathers and the blob of oil. The oil had now spread across the surface and formed a rainbow over the upturned sky of the pool. But as it spread, the pool began to turn cloudy and the constellations of shells and starfish disappeared, just as the moon and stars are hidden when the forests of the world are burned. The pool, which had reminded the children of the beauty of the world, now showed how easily it could be spoiled. It reminded them of the larger world they knew, where forests were disappearing in clouds of smoke and people in towns were poisoning the land and the seas. A world where creatures, even in far off snows and the deepest oceans, were not safe. So inside that bucket and inside the rock pool, it's making the children think about all sorts of different things. Their little pool seemed so small and the world so big just a drop in the ocean, really. And what can we do? cried the boy. You can help me, said the girl, and together they removed the tin can and dropped one feather and the blob into it. They used the other feather to skim off the oily rainbow and carefully they returned all the things from the bucket to the larger world of the pool. Soon the tide would return and join the pool to the wide, wide world of the ocean. The children left the beach as the day cooled and the sun sank into the sea. Their bucket held only the tin, the oil and the feathers. So what had they decided to bring home? They'd just brought the rubbish, hadn't they? The things that weren't living, the things that weren't helping um, in the rock pool. So they've helped to make the rock pool even more beautiful. They left all those creatures where they belonged in the rock pool so they could go back out to sea and carry on their lives. They wondered what the evening tide would bring. In the morning, they would check all the pools. We could ask the other children to help, said the girl. That night, the children watched the moon and the stars. 
They thought about all the other children who lived under the sky, who needed the warmth of the sun and the soft silver light of the moon. They all lived incredibly on one world, and that world too they held in their hands. Now, older children, that's a really important message to finish our book. Um, perhaps you can have a discussion about what you think that means. They all lived in one world, and that world too they held in their hands, just like the children in the story had held this small bucket in their hands too. Hmm. I think it's all about our responsibility actually to look after the world. But it's made me look forward to my holidays. I can't wait to be down there on the beach with my fishing net, having a little look at what the tide has brought in and remembering to put it all back safely, only taking away the rubbish and anything that will help the natural world be even more beautiful. Okay, there's my seaside story for today. Um, have a lovely day. I think it's going to be hot again uh, tomorrow or, or Wednesday as it is when you're watching this. And I'll see you round and about. Keep cool, everybody. Hope you're all all right. Bye for now. Bye.